For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. For if, after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to a wallowing in the mire. This is going to set you up to take the mark of the beast too. I just hope you know that. Believe in one saved, always saved, right? That you can't lose your salvation. Here's what's going to happen. The mark of beast is going to come out. They're going to say you can't eat or sell or do anything without this thing. So obvious. A lot of people saying, bro, don't take that as a mark of the beast. You're like, one saved, always saved. I'm good. What must I do to be saved? You must ab abide in Jesus Christ. You must abide in Jesus Christ. You must put your faith in Jesus Christ. And you do that by keeping his commandments. Instructions are simple. Open your book. What did Jesus say to do? Okay, I'm supposed to forgive people. Got it. What else? Be merciful. Got it. Okay, right? Stop lying. Got it. Okay, give to the poor. Got it, right? That's what Jesus said to do, so that's what I'm going to do. But um, it's still an easy gospel to preach. It's still an easy gospel to preach. The only thing that makes it harder is that now it's not all, you know, rainbows and sunshine. Yeah, man, you don't got to turn from your sins. I know some. I know you probably heard that before, right? <laughs> you probably heard you got to repent of your sins, bro. False gospel, bro. You don't even got to do that. You can do. You can keep doing what you're doing now. You just got to realize Jesus Christ was real and he really did die on the cross, bro. When he did that, he paid for your sins. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, we got the Ten Commandments and they're they're supposed to show us that we need a savior. You know, because it's impossible for anyone to do any of the laws. Truly, I mean. You know, it's impossible for anyone to do all the laws and it's impossible really to do most of the laws. You know what I'm saying? The laws aren't even really here for the righteous. The laws aren't even here for us to, to guide us. They're just here to show us that we're sinners and that we're wrong and that we're wicked and, and we can never save ourselves. And so what we really need to do is just believe that Jesus Christ finished it on the cross. He did it all on the cross. And then, you know what I'm saying? Like you can do if you want to. If you want to do like things like start turning, it'd be good to, but you don't have to. You don't have to. I don't got to. Mm -mm. Yeah. Do I got to go to church? Nope. Do I got to read my Bible? I mean, no, you should. You should, but you don't got to, bro. Right? You don't got to. And, um, and yeah, okay, so I got this girl, you know, I don't got to marry her. Nah, bro. Nah. Okay. I'm gay. Do I got to do that? Do I got to stop being that? Nah, bro. Do you really believe in Christ? You know, you know, I, I, I really like some of, you know, my family's Muslim, my family's Muslim. And so like, I really don't want to tell him. I don't want to really chant. But like, if I believe like with you right here, right now, you know, I can still like do the Muslim stuff and just keep it low key and just, you know, that's this way I know I'm saved, but I'm also still cool with my family. Yeah, bro, that's fine. That's fine. You know. Um No. No, no, no. It's not fine. It's not. It's not about you, it's about Jesus. You may don't you gotta believe in Jesus? You yeah. I mean, even in your model, you still got to do something, right? You still have to do something. You still got to believe in Jesus. You got to believe you're a sinner and you, it isn't about you, you know, but it is to a degree in the sense of if you don't do what you're supposed to do, you will die. It's that simple. You believe the same thing. It's just that we disagree on what we're supposed to do. You still believe you got to do something, right? You got to repent, right? You got to change your mind about something, right? So you still got to do something. Everybody, I'm saying we both got to do something. You're just something is very, very, your something is just different from my something. So I'm going to go over the absolute filth 
mockery, absolute blasphemous, atrocious, filthy clips that you have unfortunately just heard from Young Don Reborn, who's probably demon-possessed. I mean, this is a total 180. It's just mind-blowing. This reminds me of Judas Iscariot when he did his 180. He was hanging out with the disciples for three years. Satan enters him and he just goes full-blown rogue and betrays Jesus. But uh, so Young Don Reborn, formerly known as Young Don the Sauce God, Little G, which I believe suits him way better. Should have stuck with that name, Sauce God. So I'm going to go over the clips one by one now, starting with his denial of once saved, always saved. A lot of people saying, bro, don't take that to market the beast. You're like, once saved, always saved. I'm good. Anyone who denies once saved, always saved is described in 1 John chapter 5, starting verse 10. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. In order to believe in God, you have to also believe the record. And the record is found in the next verses. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Sauce God does not believe the record that believers have eternal life. He believes you can lose salvation. Is that eternal life? Absolutely not. That's temporary life. He believes in temporary life, which means he doesn't believe in God, which means he's unsaved. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe in the name of the Son of God. You can't know you have eternal life if you believe in loss of salvation. You believe on Jesus, you have everlasting life, and you won't be condemned. What happens if I believe and I live in sin? It means you have everlasting life and you won't be condemned. You're just living in sin. What happens if I believe and then stop believing? It means you have everlasting life and you won't be condemned. You've just stopped believing. That's literally all there is to it. Also, believers can't take the mark of the beast. A lot of people saying, bro, don't take that to mark of the beast. You're like, once saved, always saved. I'm good. We see this in Revelation chapter 13, starting verse 7. And it was given unto him, the Antichrist, to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Only unbelievers will worship the Antichrist, which is why it says that only those whose names are not written in the book of life will worship him. As soon as you believe in Jesus alone for your salvation, your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. We see this in Revelation chapter 3 verse 5. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. What Jesus is saying is that overcomers are not blotted out of the book of life. Well, how do you overcome? 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 1 John chapter 5, starting verse 4, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Believers are considered overcomers whose names will not be blotted out of the book of life, which proves once saved, always saved. Everything happens the moment you believe in Jesus. You receive the Holy Spirit. Your sins are forgiven, past, present, and future. You now have access to the Father, etc. There's dozens of things that happen when you believe on Jesus. Your name being written in the book of life is just one of them. Also, it's going to be obvious when the Antichrist comes on the scene, for believers at least. There's no new thing under the sun. When Jesus came, all the believers recognized him. The unbelievers didn't recognize him. We see, we see this in John chapter 5, starting verse 46. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? John chapter 8, starting verse 42, Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? The unsaved Jews didn't understand Jesus. Even because ye cannot hear my word, ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. 
When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinced of me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Is the Antichrist going to be of God? Absolutely not. So those who are not of God will hear the Antichrist. Those who are of God will not hear the Antichrist. John chapter 10 verse 5, And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Next clip. Christ, You must put your faith in Jesus Christ, and you do that by keeping his commandments. So what Sauce God is doing is he equates believing in Jesus to obeying the commandments found in Matthew. What he has done is taken these verses and has mixed them in with salvation. You can't do that because Christ was teaching the law of Moses. He was teaching the law of Moses to the absolute maximum perfection. His point was to scare the living daylights out of you. Here's just a few verses. Matthew chapter 5, starting verse 28. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out. By the looks of it, sauce God hasn't obeyed Jesus' commands. He doesn't have faith and is not saved according to his own standard. Unless we want to pick and choose what commandments we want to obey from Jesus... Well, no, you don't actually have to pluck out your eyes. You just have to do your absolute best to not look at a woman with lust. Well, according to Galatians chapter 3, verse 10, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Curses everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So yes, you would have to pluck out your eyes to not look at a woman with lust. These work salvationists are so lazy. Pluck out your eyeballs, you work salvation fools. Even if they did, it wouldn't matter anyway, because they've already sinned and curses everyone that continues not in all things 24-7 around the clock. And cast it from thee, for it, is profitable for, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Okay, Jesus, I'm going to go and chop off my hands now. It's stupid. No one will be justified by the law of Moses. Acts chapter 13, verse 39. And by him, Jesus, all that believe are justified from all things, from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. That's the point Jesus was making in the Synoptic Gospels. You can't be saved by following the law of Moses, so you trust in him to be saved. Next clip. You know what I'm saying? The laws aren't even really here for the righteous. The laws aren't even here for us to, to guide us. They're just here to show us that we're sinners. First Timothy chapter 1, starting verse 9. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient. He sarcastically denies this, meaning he believes the law is for the righteous. Here's how the Bible describes those who want to follow the law in their dead spiritual walk. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Those are all the names for those who want to be under the law. I mean, this makes sense. If you steal, you're a thief. The problem is a lot of the time you don't get caught stealing. Oh, no, I'm not a thief. I didn't get caught by the police. That's in essence what these work salvationists are doing. If God was going to be counting your crimes, he's going to be counting every word, every thought, every action. Really? Even my thoughts God counts against me? Yeah, that's what covetousness is. If you look at a woman with lust, you've already committed adultery with her in your heart. So if you even think about stealing something, you committed covetousness. If you think about doing anything sinful, you're done. I mean, imagine if we humans could catch every crime a human does. There probably wouldn't be enough prisons. Or imagine we could listen to other people's thoughts. 
we probably we probably would just all end up killing ourselves. We highly underestimate how evil we are. The only purpose for the law is to condemn you. It's literally called the ministration of death and condemnation. We see this in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, starting verse 6. Who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, a.k.a. the law, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. But if the ministration of death written and engraven in stones, the law was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away, how shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect, by reason of the glory that excelleth. For if that which is done away was glorious, the law is not done away. It literally says it's done away here. How much more that which remaineth is glorious. The law condemns you so that you will put your faith in Jesus. I know your pride prevents you from seeing this. That's not my problem, though. Galatians chapter 3, starting in verse 24. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. You may, don't you got to believe in Jesus? You, yeah. Yeah, I mean, even in your model, you still got to do something. You must believe in Jesus. Here's the thing. There's faith and there's works of the law. Those are your only two options in this world. Those are your only two religions. Salvation by faith and salvation by works. Is believing on Jesus a work? Technically, yes. The work of God is to believe on Jesus. John chapter 6 verse 28. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto him, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. The work, singular, is to believe on Jesus. Works, plural, is the works of the law. The law and faith are mutually exclusive. Galatians chapter 3 verse 12, And the law, works of the law, is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. This is the stupidity of Calvinism. Calvinists believe faith is works of the law. So you can't believe in Jesus because that's work salvation. Ephesians chapter 2, 8, 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You believe on Jesus to be saved to receive the free gift of salvation. Salvation is not by the works of the law, lest any man should boast. So that's all I got from Sauce God. For those who want to keep listening to him... The Bible highly recommends you don't, or you risk becoming a damnable heretic like him. We see this in Second Peter chapter 3, starting verse 16. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, is seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen.